I have my own personal visions of where I think email is going to go. Email traffic has a generally a higher revenue per click than your organic and your paid traffic because it's repeat visits from people who have said they're interested in your brand. Let's just boost those valuable sessions that have a high revenue per session. If you are a small business, then you're facing how do we just make an improvement really quickly? You could use this to make an improvement really quickly. We try to be effective, and so here's four effective ways that you can grow your program. It's all killer, no filler. I'm Eric, and I have a momentous announcement to make here with Jordan Gordon from Pilot House's retention team, which is that we are going to launch the first new podcast on the D2C podcast network, which is going to be called the world's best email and retention podcast with Jordan Gordon. You could call it Twiburp if you want to use the acronym. I'm hoping that acronym catches on, but I couldn't think of a better uh, person to be doing with doing this with Jordan. So I'm glad to bring you as the first member of the D2C podcast network. Uh, yeah, um, I'm obviously super excited about it. I, I thought I, you know, there's a couple things. One, I thought I would just explain what I want to achieve with it. Because what we'd like is I have a bit of an audience in, in on the DTC pod. And we would obviously love, love that audience to, to check out um, the, the specialized email retention pod. So talk about what we're trying to achieve. And then uh, as a teaser, to give you an idea of, of, of where we want to take this, I'm going to walk through uh, basically Foundations 1. And Foundations 1 is what am I supposed to do with an email program? I think like this, this podcast is going to come out in about two weeks. And then probably by the next week, we will have that first episode ready on your own RSS feed. So that by the time you're hearing this, you will be able to find the world's best email and retention podcast Assuming on your I favorite player. Mic working. Okay. <laughs> well, then why don't you take it away and tell us high level what you want to accomplish, what exactly you're focusing on with this podcast? Yeah, very good. I have my own personal visions of where I think email is going to go. As privacy becomes tighter and tighter, what I think is going to happen naturally in email in years to come is that lead capture moves up further up the funnel so that we can start leveraging algorithmic work in, in the first party world, right? So I think we'll, people will want to do that lead capture earlier and leverage a bunch of automation from email. Also, email being... Um, an HTML page, I mean, if it's full design, it's a very simple HTML page, but email being an HTML page, it lends itself to the same kind of generative AI generated activities that landing pages are going to leverage. I mean, we're going to have like AI generating all kinds of landing pages. It's probably going to be generating all kinds of emails too. And there's this entry point in email, uh, in, uh, let's just say like a non... Um, like there's no, there's no big players. Mark Zuckerberg is not in email saying, hey, this is what's going to happen. So there's, there's a real opportunity for all kinds of uh, innovation and, and small players with big ideas to step in and change how email works. There was one other point that you made that I think would be good for the foundational knowledge of this podcast, which makes it clearly different from something that Zuckerberg built or that all of these other tech lords have built, is that email is a public utility in a way, like email, email is not, email isn't a tech platform that can be centralized and dominated by one player necessarily. It's literally like the, it's like the airways. It's like the radio waves at this point. Yeah. It's like the RSS feed for podcasts, which is sort of inherently democratized in that everyone can access it to, to some degree. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Email is not an advertising platform. It's a, it's a public utility. It's a free public utility. So look, there's that vision, Right. And the interesting thing about email, I mean, over the years, I've just like I've thought so much about like, what the hell is email? And the reason that I have this role, you know, at Pilot House, and I've had other roles, and all these email, email people have roles, is because individual professionals acting individually, <laughs> I guess, right? Um, of their own accord. Of their own accord, that's right. Yeah. Are pushing email forward, right? They're saying, ah, oh, people who want email to work for marketing are in every day doing things that make email work for marketing. And if people were not doing that, 
email would just grind to a halt for email marketing. It would not grow uh, and it would, it would atrophy and would no longer be good for marketing. So uh, the gods of the internet who brought us all these great protocols, they built something that one, people would just adopt, like it's so, it works so well that people just naturally adopt it, and two, it's free and open source. And it just, and it just flowered by itself. So the podcast that I'm putting together, I mean, one, like I've got a team, if I get some leads, yeah, the party's going to keep going. But at a deeper level, for email to continue to flower, it needs uh, it needs more professionals who step up and do email. That just has to happen. The ranks of people stepping in to, to take up um, the reins of email must continue. So what I want to do is try to get as many professionals and companies I can to stage one. Or, hey, I can send an email out. I'm making a few hundred bucks, maybe some more, right? And and this thing is working, and we just and just help the overall email flower as as it moves down the path that I just predicted it would move down. Give it some foundations. Give it give it a foundational layer of knowledge that you can kind of build on yeah. that really sets you up thinking about things the right way. Yeah, and, and just be part of the be my my own small part of the great story that is email, this free 50-year-old protocol uh, that that is part of everybody's life, right? To a burp. I love it. Now, give us a preview of what episode one will be about. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Actually, hold on. Before I do, I want to talk about four different, four different subcategories that I want to cover in it. And then we're going to do, because uh, then I'll, otherwise I'll have to backtrack. So I want to talk about four different things inside of the pod. First is foundations. We're going to talk about foundations one in a second. So everyone understands. I mean, I'm actually going to take a step back from everything I've been doing to date and, and look at the really big picture. But so foundations, and that is for, if, you, if you're scratching your head and you don't even know where to start, foundations. And I'll call out, hey, we're going to do foundations so you know what to listen for, right? Two is design just like how emails should look and full design HTML. Um, that would be a visual uh, pod. So you might want to check that one out on YouTube if you are listening on Apple or whatever. You know you like your diagrams. That's right. And so we'll call it out so you'll know when it's important to, to there'll be a visuals one. Uh, I'd say performance, which is like, that would be a lot of kind of segmentation, deployment. When do I send? You know, how, and how can I just make this thing make someone who's more established, who is maybe beyond foundations and just wants to optimize what they got. And then finally, the wide world of email. And that's where hopefully I would bring in some some interesting people to interview um, and maybe step a little bit out of performance uh, and a little bit out of DTC and just talk about email. That's where I'd try to fit that. And I think by balancing those, two of those four are like how to make DTC work really well. Yeah. Right? How to sell products with with emails and retention as well. Yeah, that's right. And then one is visual, which is important. You can't do email without... This is important. And this is an important point I wanted to make. So, you know, the the commie blocks they built in the Soviet Union, kind of, you know, starting 60s on... The, the, so the apartment uh, blocks, like the the living, yes, I've, yeah, I've been to Berlin. I've seen, I've seen uh, that side of the city for sure. Yeah. So, like, I find that whole thing fascinating. Uh, for sure, before those comic blocks, not everybody had um, indoor uh, plumbing, right? Mm. So they served a purpose, a, an amazing purpose, right? But after that purpose was served, everybody moved out. I was in Bulgaria a few months ago, if anyone was following, we went to Sofia and I saw some of these commie block buildings that are just rusty and falling apart and no one wants to live there. I also went to the Bulgarian countryside and there's these little cottages with the red roofs and everyone's keeping them up and maintaining them. They were designed to be beautiful and the commie blocks were designed for a function. So if you make your email channel like a commie block where it's just got a function and you do not beautify it, you do not beautify people's inbox, they're not going to stick around. So the design portion that I just discussed is really important. It's really important that people bring beauty to other people's inboxes. So we'll talk about that. Um, Those are the four sections, the four things I want to accomplish. And now, as you were saying, Eric, we should talk about foundation one. Let's do it. And those kind of like post-Soviet observations are the kind of thing you're going to get on the world's best email (laughs) email and retention podcast. You're going to get that mixed in, which I'm looking forward to. So the number one thing I ask myself when I'm auditing accounts and I audit, I don't know, 
like dozens and dozens of accounts. The number one thing I think is, what is this program even trying to accomplish? What are they doing with this thing, right? I see some flows, I see some campaign stuff, but it's not clear what the strategic purpose of the program is. And I think what people have probably done, they're probably at a foundations kind of level, um, and they're just like, well, I know there needs to be a checkout abandon. Yep. We need to send some campaigns. So they start shooting stuff out. But if you think about, you know, if you read like, you know, battles for antiquity, there's always some specific strategy that people are using. You win those battles through strategy. So I want to talk about four different things you can try to achieve with your email program. I would not say that this is uh, exhaustive. Of course, there's lots of different things you could do. We try to be effective. And so here's four effective ways that you can grow your program. So here we've got a little two by two. I'm a simple business guy. Love my two by two grids, right? We got productivity. So things that are very productive, things that are less productive. Um, just because something's less productive doesn't mean it's not important. It just means it takes more effort. And we got lifetime value, things that really uh, increase the lifetime value of an address and things that are less uh, lifetime value focused. So the first thing to touch on is you can build a program that saves time, right? I mean, you might not have thought this was up here, but you could build an email program. Your whole goal is I want to spend as little time on email as I can, right? So I can focus on other parts of my business. Really great for startups, of course. So the productivity, of course, is off the roof because you're putting hardly any time into it. But I would not say that it's, this would be the, the lowest, would generate the, the least amount of revenue. Because right? you're just putting less, you're putting less time into it, and specifically less campaigns, and you're and you're leaning on the automations, and you have larger automations, less campaigns. Campaigns, even though each individual address sent to a campaign generates maybe five percent of what an address does in a flow, you send to a lot of addresses, so you can generate a lot of revenue. You cut down on that revenue. Um, great program for if you're starting up. Opposite from that is reach. A program based on reach is have the largest audience you can. So you might have heard me say this in the podcast before, but there's about, if you look at your repeat buyers every month, about 10 times more repeat buyers are receiving email than are not, which basically means when someone's getting your emails, they're going to buy. And if people stop receiving your emails for whatever reason, whether they ask to or whether they fell off the engagement window and fell off the map, when people stop receiving your emails, they stop buying. Right? They're just out of the mix. So the idea is, well, the, the inverse then is you grow your list, you grow your revenue. And it's absolutely true. If you have a, a list with a million addresses, you're going to make way more every month than if you have a list with 10,000 addresses. So reach. Reach is not super productive. Reasons are you need a lot of messages because you, you need interactions to get first party data to keep fattening up the list. And since you're sending all those messages to fatten up the list, they have to be interesting. So if you want someone, remember, you can't build a comic block email program. If you want someone there in year two, in year three, in year four, still on your program, you, you need to send them very interesting content, beautify their inbox, add value, whatever it is, whether it's like thought leadership, recipes, whatever. And then acquisition and retention, acquire and retain. Basically, acquire, I would, I would think of acquire as an extension of your, of your ads funnel. Right? So someone comes into the, into the list and you're thinking, come hell or high water, I want to close this business. So you come in and you're getting three emails a week and you're either going to buy or unsubscribe, period. Right? Um, so if you want the cash right now, you want an acquisition based program. Right? This requires a lot of campaigns. I mean, you can work on some time-saving stuff where you, you automate a lot of those repeat messages and make evergreen messages. But to even get there, you need a lot of messages. You're going to need to have tons of messages to make this happen, to, to make sure you can blanket someone's inbox when they first get in. And the, so it's very unproductive. It's an unproductive program. But if your time value of money, if, if you have a, a time value of money kind of uh, situation where that money is worth way more right now than it is in a year for whatever reason then that low productivity doesn't matter. And you'd be okay potentially burning them on their LTV because you'd be hitting them with a salvo of, yeah. of ads. Or if you didn't think that repeat business was going to 
like let's see if a, pro- a product that isn't going to drive a lot of repeat business. It's a what? It's a lifetime. It's a tungsten cube. It's a three inch by three inch tungsten cube that literally will survive, uh, you know, yeah. a nuclear fallout. So, don't need another one. I will say that like we have we have uh, one client that does um, some some baby stuff, and the interesting thing about baby stuff as well, those repeat purchases are only going to happen if they have another baby, <laughs> right? So, um, so uh, they are uh, I would say like less um, of a retention based business and more of an acquire based business. But we have, we've worked on them as a retention-based business um, and uh, a meaningful, there's been a meaningful increase in their repeat buyer rate. So just because just because you don't think you're going to get a lot of repeat business doesn't mean this is, isn't valuable. I think you try this and if this isn't working, then you, then you default to this. Put the extra effort in, make the extra messages, squeeze the rag. Now, on retain, like just rule of thumb, this is like three or four emails a week and this is like one or two emails a week acquisition three or four, retain one or two, because you want to stretch out the amount of time you're speaking to that person because you're thinking, well, in six or nine months, you know, at the latest, I want them to make that additional purchase, make them a repeat buyer. We are going to use automations um, to try to make them a repeat buyer immediately, like make them a repeat buyer within 30 days is the point of post-purchase. But if, if they don't, then we stretch it out, some, some entertaining content, um, and just try try to keep them on the list. And when when they naturally are ready to make an additional purchase, they make it. And we don't get too pushy up front. Uh, we actually our, our segmentation actually removes for a few days removes people out of campaigns when they first get in the list. We let the welcome flow do it do its job and try to stretch out the address. So there, first thing is our four purposes of an email program. The next thing I ask myself when I audit an email program is how are they try- how are they trying to achieve what they want to achieve? Okay, we know the purpose, but how are they going to do it? And this just like this, just like just like the 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 why, the um, the how is also just all over the map, right? Uh, so I tried to um, organize this uh, in a way to convey. Another two by two grade, we got complexity versus branding. Complexity is kind of related to productivity. So the easiest thing to do is drive people into the catalog. Make an email program that just drives people to the appropriate place in the catalog. If you've got a funnel, move them, try to get them, move them two stages down the funnel. Don't make them do the whole funnel again. This is great, especially for large catalogs, because we can leverage what Clavio does best, which is it does a lot of things best, but it, it's really good at dynamically loading um, recommendations, new to site, trending, yep. best sellers. segments. Yeah, right? totally. All, all of Clavio will put in front of someone what they want to purchase. So let's leverage Clavio and just do that. So don't make them go to the category page, drive them right to the product. Or don't make them go to the site, drive them right to the category page. And the nice thing about this program, a catalog based program, Low complexity, we do a lot of this because it's low complexity. We're obviously, first thing we're looking is low for the low hanging fruit. Um, and it's also, we don't have to understand the brand qu- to quite the same degree to set this up. So this is like, it's good for us, um, but good for anybody who just wants to drive performance results. And you know this program, to, to, to judge the effic- efficiency of this program, efficacy of this program, um, you need to go to Google Analytics and you look at, email traffic to your category and product pages. And we just want to, hey, let's just really boost the email traffic to the product and category pages. Email traffic has a generally a higher revenue per click than your organic and your paid traffic because it's repeat visits from people who are who have said they're interested in your brand. So it's like, let's just boost those valuable sessions that have a high revenue per session. Uh, the second, um, on low complexity, it's positioning where we're going to use the emails to just explain the features and benefits. I maybe do like I, I love pain point and pain point resolution and just talk about how your product is positioned versus other products or how your brand pro- brand is positioned versus other brands in the space. You don't call it those brands. You just talk about, about what your product does and why it's appealing. So this is also a little complexity because it's just in the email. Everything we're talking about here, the catalog one, it's just, just emails that drive to the catalog. And this is just emails that express, explain your product. If I had to say what we do most, it's retention, 
doing a mix of catalog and positioning in the email. It's just, it's just easy to do. Um, and this, of course, is much more branded, right? This is high on the branding axis, uh, doing the positioning. So more complex, so higher on complexity now, and low, low branding is path, a specific curated path. Give me an example. Well, here's the path for most e- e-commerce brands, right? This is the simple one. Address, first time buyer, repeat buyer, right? And that one, that one is so simple that you wouldn't do a, that, that path is already done. It's welcome, post-purchase reactivation, right? So really simple. But let's say you've got um, subscribe, a product subscribe. Well, okay, how is this gonna work? Someone buys, do we immediately try to get them to subscribe? Do we try to make, get them to do a repeat purchase and then get them to subscribe? Do we try a replenishment? Buy exactly what you just bought with a one click, right? To try to get them um, to, make, to be just a simple repeat buyer? Do we try to move them down the catalog, right? Rather than getting them to subscribe to what they bought, do we try to put them down a different path and, they, and, and kind of try to get them to subscribe later? Um, it basically, and, and broaden their, their exposure to our catalog um, from a, an, on a purchase standpoint. So those are different paths. And you can't know for any brand which is the right path right away. If you try these different paths, what's the right path to get them to in a complex in a complex environment to get them to the, the really important one, which is subscribe or which is buy the premium product, right? Okay, get them in on the, on the essentials one. We want to get them to premium. How are we going to do it? So those would be curated paths. And that is higher complexity. Um, and, and, and generally, I would say require is less, less brandy, right? It's just, it's just a very performance. And the it's last a data one, initiative too, right? If you, if you have someone in on a certain – I've talked to brands recently who found that, that they had a certain hero product they thought was their hero product. But when they looked at the data, it turned out that people who bought that product actually tended to buy less things of a lower price later. And so they've switched their focus from this hero product to another one. And they find that when people aren't coming in on this specific hero product, they have a longer LTV from their customers. Yeah. So this is um, essentials, seasonal, and premium. This is Mm. the way that I think about this. Now, here's the deal. Once someone buys your essentials, they generally, they walk, they're done. the, The essentials are the stuff that everybody buys. So if you just sell them all the essentials up front, which is the easier sell, by the way, because of their essentials, you hasten the path to them being done with you. So rather than that, you would, you would, you never discount your essentials. Essentials are always full price. What do you do? You draw them in with a seasonal, right? And you put a good price on the seasonal and some nice pictures. They're drinking their lattes. Hey, ciao, right? That stuff. And then get them on the essentials or the premium, right? I mean, maybe you actually want them to move from essentials to premium. So, you know, uh, after someone buys that essentially, you push them on the premium. Like, like I say, exactly. Different paths, right? These, these are, are, are different paths. And the final one here, media. And that's like to just have email part of your broader media environment. Um, this is quite complex and people have Instagram. Do we want more UGC? Uh, do we want to do want to show people uh, the exciting stuff from the YouTube channel? Well, we're not going to drive them to YouTube. We're going to have a landing page. The email is going to have a, a thumbnail to the video and beneath the thumbnail is a product and the landing page has the same product, right? And uh, I mean, we're working with brand right now. I think they've got like a, a product that is really good in, in a shop, like, a, a, like a, an automobile shop. And they did a survey, and the uh, turns out their audience likes rock. If you, if you ever like worked on cars, people just like listen to rock and work on cars, right? So, so the idea we're working on. I don't know. I'll tell people how it works if it works out. We're gonna share a Shopify li- a, a Spotify list. Like why nice. not just drive people to a cool Spotify list in their email? That's really just a, like a delightful way to interact with your audience. And, and draw them into your broader media environment. And email can act, it gets its little tentacles out and is a way to, to, to pull from each environment and push out to other environments. That's super complex. 
but it builds brand. It builds that that brand equity that you have. Like if you discover a new song from a brand that you didn't expect to, you happen to love, like that's going to make you love that brand. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so this media environment, you start, you really start playing with this when you when you have a reach strategy, when you want to build the, the biggest audience you possibly can, because you in year two, three, and four, you need to be interesting. And I right? imagine that someone's email program might will will hit especially in that second quadrant, we'll hit all of those to some degree, right? You're going to be, you're going to be testing some paths. You're going to be testing media. You're going to be testing your catalog campaigns that, or like, or, or do you just, do you live in, in, in one or two quadrants versus all four? Yeah. I mean, as always, this is a model. Yeah. Right? And, and um, uh, all models are wrong and some models are useful. Yeah. yeah. So this is a way to think about your email program. And mostly it, it, so the first one we discussed it's like, okay, what are the metrics for the business metrics you're trying to drive? So just align email around the business metrics you're trying to drive. You're going to make some sacrifices. You're going to walk away from some stuff, right? But you're going to but you're going to achieve these specific things, and you're going to spend you're going to waste less time, and that time can be spent elsewhere. Um, like realistically, if you are, I mean, also why do why do I present this? I mean, so if you are a small business then you're facing something the exact same way we are when we get a brand. Okay, well, how do we just make an improvement really quickly, right? So you could use this to make an improvement really quickly. If you were in an established channel on the brand side and you had lots of time, you would certainly be doing some of a bunch of this stuff all the time. You'd probably be retention or, or acquisition because that's like very technical. How long do you want an address to be around? But mm-hmm. in general, you'd be doing a whole bunch of this, a whole bunch of this different stuff. Do you have, I guess it all depends for Brett, but do, do you, like you said where Pilot House likes to live with clients mainly, where, yeah. do, you, where um, do you think is the, the, the most, is it obviously going to be in the, in the, the right most quadrants here? I'll just, I'll just say what we do the most. And I think it's just because it makes sense for, for where we are, for where we are in Pilot House. We do mostly, it's a retention based channel and a mix of, of driving people to the catalog and doing positioning within the email. And that's because driving people to the catalog and doing positioning with the email is, is incredibly easy. It's very low complexity. And when you think about the path and the media, I mean, we do, we've got uh, maybe half a dozen clients that we're, that we're working on this path for, but you have to be with the client long enough to understand the product and to understand the list to yeah. really start optimizing that. So the first thing you do is just this stuff at the bottom. You do the easy stuff first, right? And the reason we do the re- retain most is we have, we're at a full service digital marketing agency. Lots of channels are trying to drive a first purchase, right? So we're just chasing the same dollar if we're spending all our time trying to, trying to drive the first purchase. Whereas if we try to drive a second purchase from a late dated address, we add to the Shopify revenue without adding to the ad cost which improves cost to acquire metrics, ad efficiency metrics, which lets the ads team invest more money in the top of the funnel. It just unlo- it unlocks budget for us. So that's mm-hmm. why we do that specifically. And as far as kind of, you know, why we would work on a high productivity, we mostly work on high productivity, low complexity, because, you know, the dollar that someone spends with us, we can, we can do more with that dollar if mm-hmm. we focus on high productivity, low complexity stuff, uh, it doesn't mean that we won't do the other stuff. It just means obviously we're going to get less done. So that, so it's, you know, and, and uh, everybody wants an, a nice retainer when they're working with an agency, right? So <laughs> we, we just try to try the most we can. But what I recommend with people at home, enough about our agency, what I recommend for people at home, obviously, is think about working on high pro- productivity low complexity stuff. And then you're just making the decision, am I doing a lot of branding or not? Am I just trying to get people to convert, drive them into the catalog? Or am I um, really trying to explain who we are and, and why we're the best? Um, but but start with saving time or retention and uh, and driving people to the catalog or, or writing a lot of positioning in the email. Nice. Well, I look forward to the world's best email retention podcast, diving deep on more of this stuff. I think you're going to be talking about deliverability. You're talking about, you're going to be talking about flows. You're going to be talking about all sorts of wonderful email and retention related topics. Yeah. And hopefully this gives people an idea. This is like 
uh, there's quite a bit that's going to flow from this. I mean, yeah. we touched on half a dozen, maybe 10 important points here. Each of those important points can be a, a segment, right? Um, or, or a segment of, of a show. So this is like a little map of, of, of where I want to take people with foundations and with some of the performance stuff. Uh, it's nice to announce this. I haven't bought the mic yet. So, you know, uh, but I'll, I'm, I think I'm going to buy that tonight. Nice. Um, and we'll just, we're going to just get started and and, uh, and take it from there. Love it. Love to, love to bring this into the world with you. Look forward to it, man. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you're not getting the D2C newsletter, you can subscribe for free at directtoconsumer.co. And if you want to learn more about Pilot House's all-killer, no-filler services, take off to pilothouse.co. I'm Eric Dick, and this has been the D2C Podcast. We'll see you next time.